welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this fabric storage bin. Now, I know this video is a little bit on the long side, but it is aimed at beginners. Anyway, stay tuned and I'll show you how to make it. Alrighty, y'all, let us get started. Yes, I did take a very short break. I get tired, y'all, and I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. So I took like a week break, but I'm back. Anyway, what you're going to need for these fabric storage bins, of course, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to need a sewing machine. If you want to hand sew these, more power to you. Mad respect to you. Um, you don't need to have any, you know, any particular sewing machine. I have inexpensive ones. I have expensive ones. I have old ones. I have new ones. As long as your sewing machine can make a straight stitch, you should be just fine. But anyway, first off, what you're going to need, fat quarters. Now, if you're pretty new to sewing, I always suggest just grabbing these fat quarters when you're at Walmart, okay? Because they're already pre-packaged. They're all laid out. You know, you can see the designs. You can see the colors. You can mix and match them as opposed to, you know, having the person at Walmart or the fabric store to cut you a yard or two of the fabric. I always just grab handfuls of these things and have them on backup for when I want to make something. But fat quarters is a quarter yard of fabric, and I got these with these cute pineapples, and then I got these yellow ones. Now, for these bins, you can use whatever size fabric you have, but just know that you're going to need two pieces for each color that you're going to be using, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So, for this one, I'm going to be using four fat quarters total. You're also going to need some fusible fleece. Now, in the craft store, this is over near the quilting section, okay? And it's fleece. It's sort of a thick, fleecy type fabric. If you can see on the back side, you see like all these little nubbies here. When you put an iron to it, these little nubbies sort of melt and they adhere to the fabric and it makes the fabric stiffer so that it can hold its shape. Now there's a bunch of different types of interfacing. Now, why do I choose the fleecy kind? It helps your, your bin or your basket or whatever to hold its shape but it's also bendable. There's a lot of interfacings out there that's a lot stiffer than this and they crease, okay? Like with continuous use, they will crease and then you're gonna have a very noticeable crease on your basket. As you can see right here with this one, see it holds its, I gotta go back and sew this part, but um, it holds its shape, but you know, when you bend it and use it, you don't see like any harsh creases on it. That's why I use this. But when you buy it by the yard, it's going to come with this piece of paper wrapped around it, okay? It's on the whole bolt of fleece. So when they cut it for you, they're going to give you this piece of paper. If they don't, you need to ask them for the paper to go with it. But this is Fusible Fleece Style 987F, okay? Fusible Fleece Style 987F, and that is the brand. You can get this pre-cut in little packages, but you pay more for it that way. And for this particular bin, you're going to need half a yard of this, okay? I, I have a few yards here because I use a lot of it. But anyway, let's get into our fabric. So you can use however much fabric you want to make this bin as big or as small as you want. You really can't mess it up. Have a lot of people say, well, I, I don't want to get into sewing because I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Honey, it's just fabric. And these are pretty inexpensive. They range from 97 cents up to $1.97, you know? I mean, it's pretty inexpensive. So let me get this label off. And then what we're going to do is, for each color that we have, we're going to cut it into a square. Doesn't matter how big the square. You just make it however big you have for your fabric. Okay, let's get this little piece of cardboard out here. Now, what I have here is sort of like a quilter square. It's just a, like a flexible piece of plastic, you know, and you use it to measure your fabric squares when you're making quilts. I use this because it is square. And then you're just going to take your fabric. Let's get it out this way. I don't even iron it. If you want to iron it before you start, you know, you go right on ahead, but we're getting ready to smash it flat here in a second anyway. So I'm just going to take this square piece of plastic and I'm going to lay it down on the fabric and then I'm going to trim around it with my rotary cutter here, okay? So I'm just going to cut out the square. I'm going to do that for all of these pieces of fabric, okay? 
So in total, we're going to have four fabric squares. All right, I have all of my fabric cut. So we have two squares of the pineapples, and this is going to be our outer color. And then we have two squares of the yellow. That's going to be our inner color. And then I cut two squares of the fusible fleece. All right, so this fusible fleece is going to go on the outer color, okay? The outer color. So what you're going to do, and I have my ironing board and iron set up in, in the laundry room in there. But you're going to take your fusible fleece. You see the little nubbies? You want the little nubbies pointing up. And then you're going to take your fabric and you're going to lay it with the wrong side against the nubbies. Okay, so nubbies are up. And then you're going to lay your fabric on top of it. Just like that. And then you're going to take your iron, put it on the highest setting, no steam, okay? But if you read that paper that comes with a fusible fleece, it pretty much tells you what settings to use. That's the settings I use. I put it on the highest setting, no steam. And then you're going to take your iron, set it on the fabric, and then let it sit for about 10 seconds. Pick it up, move it to another section, let it sit for 10 seconds, and then do that all over your fabric. Let it cool completely and then just kind of barely kind of pull it apart a little bit just to make sure that everything has been stuck together, okay? So you're going to do that with both of the pieces of your outside color, okay? So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so the fusible fleece is on both pieces of my outer fabric. Now what we're going to do is we need to cut out some squares at the bottom. That's going to give us that little, where did it go? Right here. That's what's going to make the bottom sit flat. So let me get that out of the way. Now what I have here is this smaller little quilting square, but you don't have to have all these, okay? I mean, I can link in the description box, look for my Amazon shop link, and I can have some links to all this good stuff. But, you know, you don't need it. Just cut out a 12 by 12 square, and then, you know, you can use cardstock or something to make a template. But here at the bottom, I'm going to be cutting out a 3 inch square. Okay, so this is our three here and our three down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to match up these lines. Let's see, can y'all see what I'm doing? I'm just going to match up these lines. See, three inches here. Now move this down to the three inches. And you see this little point right here. This is where you have the point of your fabric. It just helps everything to stay nice and squared. And I'm taking a fine tip felt pen. And I'm just going to draw the square. You know, we're going to be cutting this out. So it doesn't matter what you use to draw it on there with. Okay. So now you have your big square. And now we are zooming out. <laughs> and now we're just cutting out small squares in the corner of the big square. Not difficult. And once you get the hang of making these, it's just going to be second nature. You're going to remember all this stuff and, you know... It gets easier. Believe me, it gets easier. All right. So you see here we have our big square, and then we're going to cut out these two squares here. Now you're going to do that on every piece of your fabric. Okay, so we have our four pieces. You're going to cut these little squares out of all four pieces. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I have these squares cut out on all of my fabric, and now we're going to pin them together. The matching colors, we're going to pin them together with the right sides facing each other. And while I'm doing that, <laughs> jewelry time. This is paparazzi jewelry, only $5 for each piece. I'll have a link in the description box down below that says paparazzi. You click on that, and then click on the tab that says shop, and it'll take you to the jewelry. But see, I'm going to uh, cut this interfacing <laughs> just a little too small, but it's okay. You don't have to be 100% perfect with these. That's the good thing, too. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. But anyway, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to pin it together, right sides facing each other. I'm just going to pin it across the top, okay, just to kind of hold everything into place. These are just straight pins. You can get these at any craft store, Walmart, what have you. You know, I was trying to uh, cut this while I was sitting down, and yeah, that usually doesn't work too well for me. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to get this pinned together, 
and I'm going to put a few pins down the sides and then a few pins on the bottom. Now I have a tripod over here beside of me, so when I come back, I'm going to have my sewing machine here on the table and my camera's going to be at a different angle, hopefully, so that you can see a little bit better. All right, y'all, I think this will work. I've tried to get everything set up in a position so that you can actually see what I'm doing here. But anyway, what we're going to be doing is just running a seam down the sides and then one across the very bottom, okay? So one going down each side and then one going across the bottom. And I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, okay? So I have my phone is like right here at my arm, okay? So I'm going to try to do this without bumping it. Let's see, it's like so. Let me get my pedal down here. I had to take my shoes off. I can't sew my shoes on. Daggummit. All right, so one seam down the side. I'll pull it out, cut our thread, and now we're going to run a seam down the other side. Just flip it over and then run a seam down that side. done with that pull it out and now we're going to run a seam down the very bottom see this is the bottom edge here just run a seam across the bottom and you're going to do that also for your piece of yellow fabric okay but for the yellow fabric we're going to be doing it just a little bit differently than this so you're going to want to pay attention to that okay because you're going to have to leave a gap in that yellow fabric to be able to turn it okay all right so let's get started with this one i'm gonna go ahead and take this pen out because you don't want to sew over that all right pull it out there we go. So we're done with that part for now, for now. So now I'm just going to pin the two yellow pieces together, okay? And then I'm going to sew it in the same way, except for this side here, we're going to leave a gap. So you're going to sew down to about right there, you know, a few inches below the top, and then you're going to stop, take your fabric out and put it back in and then start back down. But let me get them pinned together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have my yellow fabric pinned here. I move my sewing machine around. Okay, oops, get under there. Why are you doing this? I don't know. All right, so now let's get these edges. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sew down just a few inches and then we're gonna stop, okay? Okay, we're gonna stop there, pull it out, cut your thread. And now we're gonna put our fabric back in, but we're gonna skip down a few inches. Eh, about right there. See, cause we need this space to be open so that we can turn it later, okay? So let's get our thread. Just stick this back in the machine. Eh, about right there, I reckon. Yeah, that looks good. And then sew all the way down to the end. All right, take it up, cut your thread. Now, all of these little threads here, what I do is I just knot them together and then trim away the excess because you're not gonna see any of this, you know? So I'm not really gonna take the time to sew them in with a needle because you're not gonna see them. All the threads are gonna be like on the inside between the two layers of fabric. So now what you wanna do on the other side, just run a seam all the way down the side from the top to the bottom and then run your seam across the bottom here, and then you'll be done with that piece. And then I'll come back and show you how to put them together. Okay, so we have the pieces sewn together, and now what we're gonna have to do before we actually start putting it together is, we are gonna have to sew the corners, 
But before we do that, you need to press your seams open, okay? So what you're gonna do is, you see your seams here, just open them up like this, take your iron, you hold your seams open like this, and then just place it on your ironing board and just iron over these, pressing them open just like that. That helps them to lay flat so that you know you don't have like this harsh ridge sticking up when you put your basket together, okay? So you're gonna do that. Then after you have those seams pressed, you're going to, let's just hold it this way. Now let's open up these corners and whoop, like that. And then you're gonna run a seam across here. Okay, that's gonna sew your corners together. Let's look over here at the yellow piece here. Okay, so you have your corner where you've boxed your corner. Open it up like so and whoop, where the two seams come together, you see that? Whoop. Just hold them together and then run a seam just right across there. Again, at your quarter inch seam allowance, okay? Real simple. So I'm gonna go iron these. I'm gonna sew the corners and then we'll fit them together and sew the top. Okay, why is that there? I don't know. We have both of our sides sewn and they're going to look like this. See how our corners look after we've got them sewn down and then we have our seams pressed and all that. Um, so the yellow part, while I was pressing the seams, I kind of ironed it out a little bit. Okay, here's the thing. I don't want you to listen to me on this. I know somebody out there is going to say, well, you should have ironed your fabric first. Uh, listen, <laughs> listen. The point of this project is I'm trying to get it across because a lot of people were, were talking to me before this project. Like, I'm afraid to start sewing. If you can start doing projects like this and you see that Things like this don't have to be 100% perfect in order to get a good result. That's going to ease it up a little bit for you and help you be a little bit more relaxed when it comes to sewing, okay? Because my mom, I learned how to sew when I was like five years old. I was wearing ribbons when I was six. She was so strict and it actually terrified me. So I like to be a little bit lax <laughs> in my beginner videos. Um, now, when you're making clothing, handbags, things like that, yeah, you do need to be precise. But things like this, you don't really have to be. But anyway, this is going to be our inner color, and of course, this is our outer color. So what we're going to do with this now is we're going to turn this right side out. Don't mess with that. Turn this right side out. I love this fabric. Okay, let's take your hand and let's press out our corners here. Here we go. Let's press those out. Flip it around and press those out. Okay. Now we're going to take this and put it inside the liner. Now remember, we're not going to flip this. You're going to leave it just like this. Now here's the seam on the side and here's the seam on the side. You just want your seams to be on the same side, okay? Now just put this down on the inside. And just kind of press it out towards the bottom. You don't have to have the bottom perfect. Now we're going to come see these side seams here. Line up your side seams just like so. And then I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to pin them together because we're getting ready to sew these together. Flip it over and do the same on the other side. I need to push this down just a little bit more. These side seams, let's line those up and then pin them down. Yeah, that looks good right there. All right, now you can work your way around the other sides. You just want your side seams to be as lined up as possible. So now, just take your edges here, pin those together. This is folded a little bit. I'm gonna unfold it and pin those together like that. And then you're going to do that on the other side as well. And then all we're going to do is put this back on the machine like so. And we're going to sew a seam right around the edge here. Of course, I'll have this flattened out. But we're going to sew a seam right along the edge. And then flip it the right side out. And then we'll be done. So let me get my machine back. 
All right, so we have our thread ready here. And now what we're gonna do is just kind of fit this down into your machine. Now, if you have like a um, golly, y'all can't even see that. Now, if you have like one of those attachments that allows you to sew sleeves, you know, that's cool. Just slide it on over that. But I'm just going to fit this down in there, put this right down, and now very slowly and carefully, you're just gonna sew a seam all the way around the edge. This is an insanely terrible angle, but you know what, this is what I have to work with. You get this right, and I'm not gonna make you watch me do the whole thing, just a few minutes of it, a few seconds. Okay, now see when you get to your first pin, just take that pin out, readjust your basket, a little bit more, readjust your basket, a little bit more, taking the pins out as you get to them. Okay, so I'm just going to continue running that seam along the edge and then we'll flip it right side out. I just knocked a whole bunch of stickers down. Oh, well. Okay, well, look at this little straggly string there. All right, so you see, there's our seam all the way around the edge. And now we're going to find that little spot. Remember where we skipped the spot on the side? Why is that string still here? I don't know. See, woohoo! Now we're going to take this and carefully, we're just going to start turning it and pulling this through here, like so. I like to hold the main part here and then just work the thinner part around it. Just gently do it so you're not ripping any seams. There we go, okay. Everything turned. Now it looks like that. <laughs> See our little side seams where we got them lined up a while ago. Now let's open this up and then just push the liner down inside. Just go around and make sure that we straighten out and box our little edges here. Okay. Now for this, for the hole that's left, you can run this through your sewing machine. See how you just tuck the raw edges down in there and run that little edge through your sewing machine and use some matching thread or you can hand sew that, you know, like with a top stitch um, with some matching thread to close that up. Okay, that's all you would do for that. And now that we get everything nice and pushed down, now you see how nice that looks? Our seams are so nice. All right, and just get everything pushed down in there. You can leave it like that if you want to, or you could take the edge and fold it down like that so that you can see the inside. And then I'll work this up so that it's even all the way around. And then I will press that edge with an iron just to give it a nice crisp finish. And that will be that. See, I'll just get a needle and I'll just go back and I'll sew that. Um, but yeah, pretty fast and easy. And that's all that there is to that. How cute. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you would, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media, the links to all of which will be in the description box down below, and I hope to see y'all next time. Bye!